Hello everybody. Welcome to Friday. Today is uh, March the 11th. Hello. So great to see y'all all. Y'all are early. Y'all been chatting along. Maureen, uh, first I just want to say thank you so much to my moderators today. Thank you so much. Maureen said she's expecting a blizzard. I think she said four to nine inches. She hopes. <laughs> she loves the snow. Uh, wow. Stay snuggled up. Stay warm. Stay inside and watch the snow. Um, hello, everybody. It's so great to see you. Today we're in week number four of uh, the Hummingbird Mosaic Quilt. I'm so excited, y'all. This week was a little bit more complicated than last week. There was a lot more pieces. <laughs> I'm going to switch down to the cutting board here in a second and uh, show you our progress in this quilt. I hope you, uh, even if you're not making this quilt, that you follow along with us and hang out and uh, whether you're here during the live or if you catch me on the replay and I'm just in the background while you're creating something that would be awesome hello everybody Denise Dodd I saw you commented a minute ago and I just want to say I think you're the person who commented on my sublimation photos on Facebook I think that was you and you said you are getting you're getting set up to do sublimation Y'all, do y'all see that behind me? Look, all folded up so nice and pretty. They are quilted, they are binded, and they are washed. I have to photograph them and then pack them up to be on their way. That's my four commissions that I've been working on for like the last month and a half. <laughs> but now that they're done, uh, I am getting ready to start a t-shirt quilt for a lovely client. Uh, but I'm going to have so much more free time. So I have a whole list of videos that I'm going to start recording. And some of those are sublimation photos on fabric. So Miss Denise, if that was you who commented on my sublimation and you said you're a little confused about the process, stay tuned. Be a little bit patient. I'm going to make a whole series uh, from beginning to end sublimating photos on fabric for your quilt projects and your sewing projects. Denise said, yes, it was me. Okay, Miss Denise, well, stay tuned. Sometime next week, I'm going to start on a whole series from the very beginning to the end. And I'm hoping that it's helpful for you. I also have been working on a paper pieced churn dash block. For those who are struggling getting a correct 12 and a half by 12 and a half inch churn dash block, I'm working on a paper pieced pattern. I have already made mine. I sent mine to Miss Brenda and it was so pretty red and white fabrics. And I used my paper pieced pattern to make that block and it was relatively simple. And uh, it came out exactly 12 and a half by 12 and a half. So I'm gonna make a video about that. Hello everybody. And before we get started, <clears throat> Ooh, Campbell's Creation said, I want to do sublimation in quilts sometime. Yay, okay, so stay tuned. I do have a couple of sublimation videos, like how to make tags and things like that. Uh, but this series is going to focus on photos on fabric. You know, I have some videos, how to use the June Taylor Color Fast Sheets, and then how to use your monochrome laser printer and how to use a color laser printer. Well, this time, this series is going to be about sublimation. And if you've never heard about sublimation, wow, there's a million videos already up that you could start watching and learning about the process. But that's what I'm going to work on. All right, before we switch over, I just want to give a quick reminder. Uh, next week, Tuesday evening, for those of you who are on Patreon, we are doing our workshop, our monthly workshop, where we do a show and tell of what you're working on. And we're going to work on our block of the month, the Sue Bonnet Sue block. Yes. So don't forget that. And also the date on the screen is for the mug rug of the month. That's here on YouTube, Tuesday the 22nd. And you can grab that pattern now. It's in the description box. Cynthia said, do you beginner's videos? This is going to be as beginner as you can get. I'm going to show you 
what I do first. I'm going to show you what I do second. I'm going to show you my print settings to get the best print possible with your uh, printer. And then I'm going to show you pressing it and all the fun stuff. I'm going to show you the fabric I use. I've gone through lots of trials and testing and I've hunkered down on my favorite fabrics to use and I'll be sharing that. So it is very beginner friendly. Uh, and it's going to walk you through the whole process. All right, y'all, I'm switching over to the cutting mat. There was a lot of pieces this week. <laughs> you know what I had to do? All those numbers all everywhere was just really too much for me. So... Linda, I do. I have a certain printer, and it's only for sublimation. First, I'm going to move over the right side up templates. This is the template that I use to trace my design on the black fabric, right? So what? when I sat down to cut out my pieces, right, to prep for today, I was like, I need a guide to tell me what we've already done and what has not been done. So I took a box of crayons, y'all, and I colored in the blue sky, the yellow flower. Uh, I'm doing my top flower white, but I used a pink crayon so I could tell what has been done and what hasn't, right? We've done the top of the bird's head, the beak, the eye, and the sky portion all the way across. Now, this portion is what we're doing today, right? We have lots of petals for this flower, the center of this flower, some blue sky background, and a couple of pops of green, right? We had a whole complete stem piece, a whole portion of a leaf here, and this little piece of stem right between these two petals, that's a stem piece. And uh, this stem carries down into this week, so I'm not doing this piece yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back, because I meant to do this. And I'm going to pull this up on the screen. Uh, there you go. If you want to color in your paper so that it looks like mine, I'm going to leave this on the screen for a minute. Uh, I thought coloring it in would give you a good idea of what pieces are what, right? What needs to be background? What needs to be petals? What is the stem and the leaves? So I'm going to leave this on the screen for a second. And then I numbered my mirror image pieces only. I'm going to pull that on the screen too. But I want you to see what needs to be what. And those are the pieces that we're doing today. Hello, everybody. Sylvia said, you're telling me lots of pieces. Oh, my. <laughs> I think there was like 30-some pieces this week. I double made sure that I traced the mirror images because I'm using heat and wand light, so I won't have to do that again during today's live. All right, so I'm going to take this down and I'm going to pull up the mirror imaged pattern with the numbers that I used so that when I'm putting these pieces down with you, if you want to number them the same way, uh, many of you will probably create your own system for keeping these pieces straight and numbered, right? But I just thought I would share mine. That's up on the screen. Jackie, you did the same thing. Does it, to me, my brain works a lot simpler, coloring in the things uh, and figuring out what is what before I start tracing all these pieces. Kim, that's a really good idea. Put a four, one, I like that idea. Here we go, four, one. This is week four, the first piece in that row. That's a really good idea. I just marked it down on my pattern too. Uh, but this is how I numbered mine. So the yellow petal, 
I'm using yellow, y'all, for my petals. So I'll put a Y1, Y2, Y3, Y4, Y5, 6, and 7. Those pieces I cut out of yellow fabric. Orange 1, that's the center of the fabric. And then uh, instead of using numbers for my green pieces, I labeled them A, B, C, D, and E. And then for the sky background pieces, I numbered them 1 through, I think there's 17 sky pieces. That's what works for me. Uh, if that doesn't work for you, uh, I would come up with a system that makes sense in your mind, right? All right, so we're going to go back to the, cuttings, the cutting mat. And uh, if you want to see this longer, you can always come back to the replay and pause the video right here, right? Or if you're using your cell phone to watch, you could just take a screenshot and then you can zoom in to really see these numbers, right? Because that's a lot of little numbers on the screen. All right, so cutting mats. And the first thing I want to do before we move on is I'm using my little Dritz mini iron again this week because it maneuvers really easy, but she does take a good hot minute to warm up, y'all. She is not in any hurry. So I'm going to set that on four and uh, just let her start heating up while we're moving along. So right here, these are the pieces we're working on. Fourth week, first block in that row. And I've already pre-traced all the little position pieces. So I'm going to move this mat over because I don't want to mess up <laughs> my cutting mat. No, I do not. There we go. Uh, where is it that you purchased your pattern for this? Uh, Miss Ellen, I made the pattern for this. This is all my drawings, my patterns. Yay, Stacy found the pattern right away today. Good. Uh, is the pattern for the glass window pane behind you available on your Etsy site? Good news, Gloria. That one's free. So you will not find that one on Etsy. You will find a whole playlist here on YouTube. Uh, it was called the Paint by Letters, Paint by Numbers. Uh, if you go to YouTube and in the search bar, type Lisa Cape and Quilts. And you'll see my channel pop up. Click on my channel and then go to playlist. Scroll through the playlist and you will find the whole series on that. And each one of the patterns for that is in the description box. But that one was free. The seahorse one above that, that one is in the Etsy shop. And then we did a lighthouse stained glass quilt. Uh, and that one was free. And that is uh, here on YouTube as well. I'm going to have to make myself a note to turn on this iron about five minutes before I even come on live because she takes a good minute. She's like, I'm going to heat up in my own time. You're not rushing me. <laughs> Ooh. Sue said, you have completely lost me, Lisa. I'll start looking at sublimation videos. Is it suitable for beginners? Well, Sue, um, it's a process, okay? So sublimation, in my opinion, is the best way. While we're getting this iron heating up, it is the best way. And I've tried lots and lots of ways of printing on fabric. Sublimation, in my opinion, is the best uh, but the materials are different, right? And you have to have a printer dedicated solely for sublimation ink. 
once you put the sublimation ink in it, it is a sublimation printer. You don't print normal prints with it. You have to have a heat press that goes up to at least 400 degrees. Now, some things you might press a little less than that, but some things you do press at 400 degrees. Uh, a Cricut Easy Press, some of those will work. Uh, so you have to have some equipment to start, right? But once you have that equipment, learning the process uh, is not hard. There are some tips and there are some tricks. And uh, there's lots of videos already out. Sublimation is not something new. It's something relative, relatively new to me. I've only been doing it about six, eight months. But I've done so much testing. And I've gotten a lot of that testing out of the way. So I'm excited to share like some of the things that I've learned to get me really great results. And uh, here lately, I've been offering sublimated photos uh, in my Etsy shop. So I've had lots of orders, and that's super exciting. Uh, people making memory quilts that want photos, they can order the photos. I print them and send them to them. So if you watch these videos and you're like, well, that is not something that I look forward to learning about, <laughs> but you want sublimated photos, I do offer that as a service. Just saying. All right, she's heated up, y'all. She is heated up. So I've kind of uh, separated my pieces. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces. I was like, I'm not digging through trying to find all these pieces. Let me find I'm going to have to fold this so that it fits in the screen. <laughs> and it was all new and pristinely printed and now I'm going to fold it up, but that's okay. I'm going to bring over this y'all is the mirror imaged. It's what I showed you on the screen earlier. Uh, and we're going to match up all of my pieces. I've already traced the position for them, right? The easiest one is the, is the very center of the flower. So we're going to start there. Can you see that? It's kind of small. I don't know that you can see the numbers anyway. Uh, so we're going to start right in the center of the flower today. And that's gonna go right there. And we're fusing it down, fusing it down. This week, we had one little piece of a petal from the flower up above it. And this is why I was like, you know what? I've got to color this stuff in because I don't know what is what. Right here. Da -da -da -da, right there. This petal from the top flower is underneath of a petal from this other flower. And it pops through right below it. Right there. That is what I called white one. It's one little tiny piece of white fabric for this week. And that goes right there. When I put this down, you'll see, oh, it's the white petal from up above. It's behind the petal from the flower in front of it. Ella, uh, you know what? I don't know that you might get okay results using a regular iron. But if you look at your iron, it has little holes for steam. Where those holes are, you're not going to get the same amount of heat coverage as the flat parts of your iron. So it's not going to uh, give you even results all the way through. And to be really honest, unless you take a temperature gun uh, and measure the temperature of your iron, there's no way, 
at least with my iron, it doesn't say 200 degrees, 300, 400 degrees. It just says cotton, wool, synthetic. I don't know how hot that is. And with sublimation, it does have to be a certain temperature. You can always try it and see. But uh, if anything, I would do an easy press if you don't want to get a heat press. All right, so there's that. All right, the next pieces I'm going to do are my green pieces. So this week I numbered, I numbered my green pieces with the alphabet, right? So uh, we'll start with D. What I numbered numbered what I categorized as D is actually part of this leaf right there. I think you could do this section as one big piece with that leaf or you can do it as two. And I traced mine a little big so I'm just going to cut off a little bit. There we go. That fits much better. So that's the bottom part of this leaf. I want to thank you all for hanging out with me today. All right, B is actually on the other side of the stem right there, that little piece like that. And I actually traced it fairly accurately, so I'm not going to trim anything off of this one. All right, there we go. All right, and then we have C, which is the other part of this leaf right there, right? Let's take a look and see how that fits. Oh, that works pretty good. I'm not going to trim anything off of that either. Yeah, there was quite a few pieces this week. <laughs> Last week was relatively simple, which is a good thing since I had to retrace all of my things during the live. You better believe I made really sure that I was tracing the right templates this week. All right, so you can see that leaf starting to take shape, right? It's got the little small vein running through the middle of the leaf. The stem is in front of this leaf. That's why it's separated like that. And actually, this portion of the stem, we won't do this week because it runs down into the week below it, right? So that's going to stay blank for right now. But we do have a longer piece of stem that was a whole complete piece right here. I numbered mine as E. I say numbered. I lettered mine <laughs> as E. <clears throat> Come on, paper backing. There you go. All right, the thinner section goes towards the top, Lisa. So we're going to put it right there. Line it up and press it. So there's that portion of the stem. I see my camera's glitching. I hope it doesn't 
go away. All right, so there's that. Now, there's one more little piece of green this week. And it's actually a piece of stem right there. It's in between these two petals. And if you're not paying real close attention, you might have thought that that was sky. Which I guess you could make it sky if you wanted to, but it was intended to be a piece of the stem of this flower that pokes through all of these petals. And it's so small that I did not cut it yet because I didn't want to lose it. So I'm just going to cut that real quick. I did not want to lose it. <laughs> so I'm just going to cut that real quick. And it just goes right there in between those two petals. I actually think a pair of tweezers would work really lovely for these smaller pieces. And it goes right there. When we make this stem, you'll see it goes up, peeks through, and it's actually the stem for that flower. It gets fused before I lose it. All right, so those are our green pieces for this week. We'll move on to the petal pieces, which I've done in yellow. Let's see, yellow six. That's gonna be this petal right there. Ooh, after this week, this flower will almost be done. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, that's a little tiny, tiny piece. <laughs> Yes, yeah, Sylvia, check to see if uh, if you missed that little stem. If you made it sky, I don't know that it would hurt anything. I think it would look just as nice. All right, so there's that one. Here is five. My five goes right there. like that. Susan said, I'm doing bias tape stems and I don't have to cut out all the little pieces. It's easier for me. Susan, I love that you're changing your method to work uh, something that works easy for you. I love that. Yes. You know, I show the ways that my brain works and I show ways that are easier for me, but we don't all work the same way, right? Our, our brains don't think the same way. So I'm always saying if, if another way works easier and makes more sense for you, by all means, yes. I'm glad you're doing it that way. All right, let's pull out another piece. This is seven right here. This little petal right there comes right there. It does just fit in there. So we're doing it right there. I have not even watched the weather this week. Hearing that Maureen is getting snow is a surprise to me. <laughs> that makes me want to go watch the weather. 
to see what's going to happen. I've been so busy, y'all. I finally finished up those four quilts yesterday afternoon. I can take like a slow down breath of relief. <laughs> that is done. So now I, I mean, if you have followed my channel for any amount of time, you'll know the only videos I've been putting out lately are the lives we do on Friday because I've just been so swamped. But now I can have a little bit more fun with some other videos. This is for what I numbered for. That's going to go right there along the edge. Just like so. I'm also super excited to start this next t-shirt quilt. She has waited a year. She's been in line for a year. Mm, she's been patiently waiting. I'm excited to start that. I'm hoping that there's some teaching opportunities with this quilt. So we shall see. Celeste, I'm, I'm glad you posted your baby quilts. I was glad you did. Oh, Sheila said, we have a chance of snow showers tomorrow. Are you serious? Probably won't happen. That is so crazy. I'm looking out and it's so pretty and sunny out today. That is news to me. Three. All right, three goes right there. I did not even know that with the weather. I must have done a pretty good job of tracing all these pieces because I'm not having to trim so much today. <laughs> we'll see what the pieces, the sky pieces that fit in between all this here in a second. All right, we have uh, Y2. That's going to be this petal right there. The static clean makes it really hard to get the paper off. And she's going to go right there. Uh, I don't know if y'all have been following along in Creative Crew. Uh, several people are doing the Hummingbird Mosaic quilt and posting their progress. It is so much fun to see. It's so interesting, you know, and I've said this like a hundred times, but we can all take the same pattern and different fabrics and it looks totally different, right? All right, I have one more piece for this week for yellow of this flower. Y1. And let me just tell you, with this top piece, I took a little tiny bit of creative liberty. I want to show you this. If you're making the quilt, you'll see it when you tape the patterns together. We're looking at the mirror imaged pattern right now, right? Uh, this petal extends over and just the tiny, tiny, tiny tip of the petal goes into next week. And I was like, uh, you know what? I'm going to just mark that in and we're going to do this petal this week. You can wait until next week if you want to. But see that? I just took a little pin and just drew in the little tiny tip of the petal that's missing. You can do that or you can wait until next week to get that tiny little sliver of the petal. I just drew it in and we're going to go ahead and do this petal today. Now the one below it is missing quite a bit and I didn't want to just guess at that shape. But this one was pretty obvious that it's just a tiny little tip that we're missing.
Now I do know that this is just tacking the pieces down. When we're done with the live and I plug in my regular iron, I'm going to give this a really good press. If you're using a fusible, saying that though, be careful you don't overpress your pieces. Uh, it is very possible to overpress fusible. And what happens when you do that is the fusible soaks into the fabric and it doesn't stick to your pieces and it doesn't stick to the background anymore. Your pieces will lift off if you overpress. So be really careful and mindful that you're not overpressing your pieces. So that's all of the petals. And so everything we have left to do is sky background for today. <laughs> Lots of little sky pieces. Some of them were so small that I was like, you know what? Uh, I will cut those out. One's a little tiny, tiny triangle piece. I'll cut those out, but let's place these out first, the ones I've already pre-cut. Let's see, 13 goes right to there for me. Thank y'all for watching. All right, so there's my first sky piece right there. Yes, it is very possible to overpress it. So if you're using a fusible and you notice that your pieces are starting to lift, uh, it might be that your iron was too hot or that you pressed it too long. And that stickiness, the adhesive, has just soaked right into the fabric. Piece number nine goes right there for me. With this white paper here, it kind of overexposes the camera. So my white lines are hard to see. I apologize for that. I think I want a little bit more black in between the stem and that piece. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and just trim that a little bit. Just a sliver. See the difference that makes? Alrighty, let's see piece number 11. I'm just pulling them randomly out. <laughs> piece number 11 for me goes right there. And that one's actually good. We're going to go ahead and go with it. Stay. All right, and we'll pe pull out piece number 10, which comes on the other side of this petal, just like that. I'm gonna trim a little sliver off, just a tad bit. Paper does not want to leave your fingers. Okay, we're going to put that right in there. Ooh, that's going to be pretty, y'all. Piece number 16 for me is all the way right in between the, these two petals. So let's see if I need to trim any of that. Oh, 
maybe just a sliver because I like a little bit thicker of a black line showing. Just a sliver. You know, either my tracing is off or my cutting is off. Uh, but one of the things, you know, if you cut your pieces too big, you can always just fix them just by snipping off a little bit. See that? Yeah, there was a lot of pieces this week. The thing is about these smaller pieces is they're going to go in and fill in some of these areas. So they're kind of important. That's why I didn't want to lose them. Let's see, we've got piece number 14 right there. Let's just check that for size first. And I'm going to snip some off. There we go. Oh no, Kim, you had to start all over again. I know what that's like. <laughs> I do. You'll only do that one or two times before it really sticks though, right? Okie doke. What is that? That is piece number five. All right, this is gonna fill in this area right there. Let's just check it before we fuse it. I'm going to trim a little off right along that edge of the stem. There we go. And what else do we have? We have piece number seven. Where does that go? Oh, okay, so that we're working right up in this area. Mm. No, we're not. We're working right there. <laughs> so let's just check that. Ooh, that looks good. We're going to go ahead and set it down there. Thank you, Miss Beverly. I'll tell you, when you're tracing all these random pieces, and then when you're cutting them out, you're like, these pieces just look so odd and random. But once you start putting them where they go, and it forms a picture, you're like, wow, that is so cool. All right, piece number 15 is this tiny little sliver right there. I'm going to try to get the paper off of that. Alberto, your wife loves, I'm so glad she likes watching. See that little sliver? That's where that's going to go. Ice and Snow is from Texas to Maine tomorrow. I'm, I have not watched the weather at all. I need to get, <laughs> I need to get online and see what this weather is doing. Sue. I'm glad you're watching first because when you actually go to do it, it might, uh, it might make a little bit more sense, right? Especially if you've never done anything quite like it. 
So there's that piece. One more tiny little sliver of piece number three. All right. There's a tiny little sliver. There we go. See that tiny little sliver right there? That's where my piece number three is going. That white paper just washes out everything. Okay. It's amazing what the little sliver of fabric does, isn't it? A little pop of color right there. Ta-da! All right, so what we have left are all of these tiny small pieces. Now they're really small, so it's only gonna take me a minute to cut them out. But I'm gonna cut them out as we do them because I don't wanna lose them. So my piece number two is right there, the right side of the stem. Oh yeah, Bev said that uh, it's 64 today, but in Tennessee, snow is expected for tomorrow. That's crazy. All right. So that piece is going to go right there. Karen said, go to the store for bread and milk. <laughs> All right, so that's that piece. Now, this is the smallest piece for today, anyway. Piece number 12, where did I put piece number 12? Where are you? Oh, right there. There's a tiny little sliver piece of sky right there. You know, when I drew this out, I drew it on a piece of regular paper, and then I scanned it, and then I vectorized it, y'all, and when you do that, it makes all these small little places. I don't know that I intentionally made a little tiny piece this small, but here she is. This is when some tweezers would come in really handy. See how it just fills in that empty space of those petals right there? Is it absolutely necessary that you do that piece? I don't think it is, but it does fill in a little bit of that space right there. See that? All right. Piece number 17. Where do you go? Oh, we're coming right there. And you're getting pressed. Corrine said, I got liquid text medium matte. Will this work? It doesn't say anything about ironing. No, ma'am. That's not a textile or fabric medium. Uh, that's for painting on canvases and all kinds of other ways to use it. 
but that's not a fabric or textile medium. That's not to say you can't use it, but I don't know that it's going to give you the results that you're looking for, and I don't know how it's going to act on the fabric and whether or not you would be able to sew through it. So here's what I suggest. Since you have it, why don't you, uh, this weekend, make yourself a little mug rug, right? And experiment. Use the same fabrics that you want to use for your main project. And use that. And see what the results are. See if you can sew through it. See how it dries, how it feels. And then... Finish your mug rug and throw it in the wash and see what happens. Uh, if you're doing an art quilt, it, that's not, you know, 100% necessary. But you might want to paint on a project that does go in the wash. So it doesn't hurt just to throw the test project through the wash to see what's going to happen. Test it out and see. I don't know 100% to tell you that you can't use it. But that is not a textile medium. Piece number four goes right there. Valerie said, I'm using freezer paper and having a problem with the edges raveling when I remove the paper. Any thoughts? Um... Where are you putting your glue when you glue up the piece? Where are you putting your glue? Uh, a lot of the times when I'm using freezer paper for applique, I like using a wet glue. Uh, but recently I've started using a glue stick and just quickly swiping the very edges. Doing it quick... Uh, so that hopefully the glue stick doesn't pull and fray the raw edge, right? But if you glue that very raw edge, it does help to keep the edges from lifting a little bit. Now, one of the reasons why I went with uh, Heat and Bond Light for this particular project, because we're going to be working on this for like nine weeks or so, uh, is because we're going to be pulling this up, folding it, unfolding it, messing with it, for several weeks and I thought that the heat and bond light would adhere longer than the freezer paper method. I love using freezer paper for applique but the chances of it lifting are uh, quite a bit higher. So make sure you're gluing those edges before you put your piece down in place and that might help the cool thing is you can always uh, put a little bit of glue on your finger and the edges that are lifting just reach up under there or with a paintbrush and get up under the lifted area and put it back down and repress, right? You could even do that if you're using a fusible and your edges start to lift. Uh, I was wrong. This might be the smallest piece for today. Where does this sucker go? Right there. <laughs> That's a little tiny piece. Yeah, put some glue on a paper plate and take a little liner brush or something. And just get that liner brush up underneath your fabric and re-stick it down. See how tiny that piece was? But it's very, very important because it fills in that gap right there. Let's see. How are you finishing this project? I've been trying to make up my mind. <laughs> I've been trying to make up my mind. Here's the thing. While we're cutting these last two pieces. I was going to paint this quilt. But so many more people want to see it done in fabric, right? It was fun both ways. 
When I paint on the fabric, I use black thread to quilt because the needle makes the black holes, the dark holes all over the place. Piece number six. So I use black thread when I paint on fabric to quilt with. Right. Yes, right there for piece number six. Doing it in fabric, I could have a lot of fun using all different colors of thread right and so I think I'm going to take advantage of that since we are doing it in fabric and have fun switching out colors of thread now I will say that the quickest way to quilt this well for one you could use the permanent adhesive like the red bond and the the heat and bond in the red package is permanent. You wouldn't have to quilt none of this. But I'm using the light version, so none of this is permanent until it's stitched down. In that case, the fastest way would be to layer this with a piece of tulle or a ganza and do some cross hatching. We've done that before. Uh, the garden archway, that's one of the ways I finished the smaller version of the garden archway quilt. So if you want to see how that's done, uh, search up that video or that playlist and watch how I quilted the smaller version of the garden archway quilt. Piece number eight goes right there. Y'all, this is our last piece for the day. That would be the fastest way and the easiest way to quilt all these little tiny pieces, right? <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to do that. I might just have fun with a whole bunch of different colors of thread. And in that case, uh, and I know this is going to scare some of y'all, and some of y'all are going to be like, oh, heck no. I think I would put my free, mo free motion foot on because that would be the fastest way. Yes, I would have a raw edge exposed on all of my pieces. And I am okay with that. Not everybody likes that. Being an art quilt is just going to be hanging on the wall. I don't ever foresee washing it. So the chances of these pieces fraying down the road are very slim. Plus, I used heat and bond light, which helps deter some of the fraying anyway. So I would be totally okay with doing a free motion quilting within all of these little tiny pieces. And uh, I'm relatively quick with that. And although I do think it would take some time because I would switch out my colors, that to me would be the fastest way to get all of these pieces stitched down and to quilt it at the same time. Because I would do it as a layers right batting backing stitch everything down that quilts it at the same time two things at one time and for me that is probably the way that i'm leaning to get these pieces stitched down if you look at this and you're like you've already started and you're like oh no that does not sound fun to me <laughs> uh a zigzag stitch would work a satin stitch would work but that is so much work. That is going to be a huge amount of time. But maybe that's something you enjoy doing, right? And so you're like, yes, I'm going to do that. Satin or zigzag stitch. A blanket stitch would look lovely. Maybe I'll switch it up and do some free motion stitching and a blanket stitch on the flowers. I, don't, I have not committed yet. But... If even the thought of doing the zigzag and the satin stitch is like, no, you don't want to do it, cover it with a piece of tulle uh, and do some straight line, you know, put on your walking foot and do some cross hatching. It would still be just as lovely. But then you're not dealing with 1,000 million pieces. <laughs> right? All right, I'm going to hold this up because... That fabric is washing out 
uh, oops, I want you to see the real colors. Hopefully they'll show up this way. There we go. I'll tell you, my cameras really struggle with the bright fa fabrics. There we go. That white fabric just wants to overexpose that webcam. I don't know why. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll actually put a picture of it up on the Creative Crew if you want to see it. There we go. That's better. See that? We're coming along. That was a lot of pieces today. Maybe I just had to back up away from the camera a little bit. <laughs> so, yeah. So next week, y'all, it looks like we're going to be finishing up this flower here and that top flower. The last two petals are in next week's pieces. And uh, <laughs> that's where we will be into week five. Next week, I think I'll be using teal, blue, or turquoise colors for my background. We'll keep that trend going in the center of mine. Oh, yeah, I loved the garden archway quilt, y'all. That was so much fun. I did that one both. I did the smaller version, which isn't really that small. <laughs> But it's much smaller than the big version. That is huge. <laughs> Tracy said, ooh, a gold shimmer tool would look. Yes, that would look pretty, wouldn't it? Uh, luck would have it. I have some shimmery kind of gold tool. My only issue with that one is it darkens the fabric just ever so slightly. So what was bright white is now a little bit darker. But on the black, it almost disappears. And then if the sun hits it just right, there's a gold shimmer over the whole piece. So yes, that was pr it's pretty. So yeah. Uh, so don't forget, Patreon members, I get to see y'all next Tuesday evening. Everybody here on YouTube, two weeks Tuesday, the 22nd, we're doing the mug rug of the month. Uh, if you haven't grabbed that pattern, I did put it down in the little description box for today. So you can grab that. If this is your first time watching, all four weeks pieces are in the description box look y'all so proud of me i didn't throw all my pieces on the floor today <laughs> cleanup's gonna be a breeze today yeah and then stay tuned for those of you who are interested in learning about sublimation or you've already started maybe you've already gotten a printer and ink and paper uh, and you want to learn the process, y'all, uh, one of the cool things about YouTube is there's probably hundreds of videos already out there all about sublimation, and um, that's how I learned about it. Some teachers explain it in a way that makes more sense to me, and some I have a hard time learning from. That's just human nature, right? Some people watch my videos and I explain things quilting wise that it clicks with them and the way I explain it makes a lot of sense. And some people watch my videos and they think that I overcomplicate it or I don't explain it the way that is easiest for them to learn. We're all different. So uh, if you watch some sublimation videos and you're like, this is just so confusing, I'm hoping to share sublimation videos that make sense for a quilter's mind because the reason why we would be so interested in it is because we want to put pictures in quilts, right? Or we want to make bags with pictures on them. Stuff like that, right? Not just sublimation on t-shirts or sublimation on tumblers and mugs. All that stuff is fun, but I'm going to transition my sublimation videos 
more geared towards the quilter's mind or the sewer's mind who wants to incorporate these things into projects that we're sewing. Miss Hazel, that's next Tuesday. Uh, the pattern's already up on Patreon, so you can grab that, right? And grab the stuff. And then we're doing the workshop next Tuesday. Now, for me, it's 8.30 p.m., but for you, that's like 2 o'clock in the morning or something, right? So you either have to take a nap during the day, or you have to stay up extremely late, or you have to catch it on the replay. <laughs> But I am recording it for you. Thank you, Miss Bell. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Devi. Uh, Miss Devi, I think your whole your birthday went by, and I don't know that I came back on and said happy bir happy birthday, Miss Devi. I hope it was an awesome day. So yeah, thank y'all so much for hanging out with me. Uh, I am off to finish the rest of my lunch, uh, refrigerated oatmeal. It's not the chicken nuggies and the <laughs> Big Mac that I have been doing on Fridays. Refrigerated oatmeal. But I hope you have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Uh, stay safe with this weather, the blizzard coming through. I don't know. I'm going to have to go learn more about that. And, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you next weekend or next week. Bye, everybody. Thank you, Sandra. You're so welcome. Let me find this button here. Okay, y'all. Bye, everybody. <laughs>